My name is Tuvia Kutcher. I'm 51 years old with diabetes since age nine, diabetes type one, obviously, insulin dependent, and I'm on an an insulin pump for the past, I think, 10 years or so. I think I'm pretty much under good control. My hemoglobin A1C for the past five, six years was around 6.4 to 6.7, give or take, which is under the seven of the DCCT recommendations. I'm pretty fit. I run like every two days, approximately 10 kilometers in like 50 minutes. That's a pace of five, kilo, five minutes per kilometer, pretty decent. And then I'll allow myself now to sit down. Like a half a year ago, I started using the Freestyle Libre sensor for continuous blood glucose monitoring. Before I was using the, the, free the Freestyle uh, blood testing um, sensor with doing blood tests from my finger using a device like this, as you see over here. And that gave me, and with, that, with, with using that, I got to a A1C, hemoglobin A1C of around 6.4, 6.7. I was recommended to use the Freestyle Libre sensor. I'll say for, for continuous blood glucose monitoring so that I'll be able to do even further tests and just see it over time. I should say outright, the device was an eye opener to me. I thought it would change my life, it did. However, I think it should be, um, it should be um, perhaps looked again in, in some aspects. I will say it's a great device for showing trends, but to me it seems like the, ac the actual blood glucose reading is flawed. By me, it was actually usually lower th than what it, um, uh, uh, lower than what it really was. In other words, I wouldn't give based on it uh, an injection, However, on the flip side, unfortunately, I would have higher blood glucose levels than I thought, than I, thought I had. I want to maybe share with you, and, and I'll just say, I'll show you a couple, of, um, a couple of screenshots that I have, because what I should say is, using this device, I could use it both as something which um, scans my sensor, and also if I put here a strip inside, something like these strips that you have over here, they also go in here, and I could uh, compare the, uh, the, the blood reading when I do it from the sensor versus that from the finger. What I would really urge is to go and do at least once a day blood tests from the finger so that if discrepancies are slowly but surely uh, increasing, either the device could go and calibrate like other competing devices do, or at least go and say, sir, replace the sensor, something is wrong. I'll show you now something. What's nice is we have all the metrics here with the, freestyle, uh, with the publicly available software from, from uh, Freestyle Libre. And you could see there how the measurements are different to what they should be. I should say I discovered that I was really unfortunately misled by the sensor when for the first time after like three, four years, I had a what I would call skyrocket a hemoglobin A1C of 7.3 versus the 6.4 just three months before. I was very upset. And what's interesting to see is, if you really see, if you look at the freestyle um, software, I'll show you to here. Um, if you look at my, at my screen, then you'll see here, I'm gonna show, share with you some things in a minute. But you see like here, if you look at it, and I'll make it maybe 150, percent and it'll be a bit easier you see here my this is a um the analysis of my of the download from this freestyle and you see between june and september i they have an estimated hemoglobin a1c of 6.0 when really unfortunately when i measured it in the lab i had a 7.4 and i couldn't believe it so i measured it again i had 7.3 now if you really see the annoying thing is i don't really know when something is wrong i mean the Freestyle Libre manual recommends that if you feel that there is a, a difference between what you feel and what you measure, go and do another uh, test. That's fine. But here there were various occurrences where I felt fine and just it didn't make sense to me, the reading. Like once after a run, I did a Freestyle Libre uh, sensor reading and I had 40 and I said, I don't think I feel 40. And I did a blood, and I did a blood test and I actually had 100. Later on, or the next morning, I checked and it said to me 100 with a, with a sensor. And I checked with blood from my finger and it said over 200. Now that's misleading. 
Now, what's annoying to me is you have anyhow the the blood test that you're doing from your finger, why not you calibrate it like other, comp like other competing devices do, like Dexcom or Medtronic. Now I'm going to show you here some screenshots, which I think are very interesting to see. If you look, let's say, this one here, let's say, you see here, the legend is basically, uh, um, wherever you see an open circle, it's a, a reading from the sensor. And if you see a star, let's maybe I'll uh, slightly reduce here the zoom if you see a, a, a star well you don't have it here that means i did a, a finger test reading so now if we look let's say over here like over here you see the sensor said 115 and i did a from the finger it's 144. now that's not too bad i mean i don't like it but it's not too bad here you see also it's 193 versus the sensor 220 that's not too bad here i changed the sensor and you see here, like initially, it's really okay. 125 from the, se from the sensor and 118 in the finger. But now look what's happening here. Here, it's 72 versus 127. Now one may say, okay, it's because the sugar is changing very rapidly. Well, look, here it's even going slowly. And you see the sensor says 121 and the blood is 158. Here the sensor says, and it's pretty flat. 91 or 79 and the center is 127. It's already a nice difference. Here already is there is 64 versus 107. And you have like even here again, we have, I don't know, around 116 or 132 versus the 163, which is far higher. And here you see what's happening slowly but surely over time. You see the dates. This was Tuesday 28th. Here's Wednesday 29th. And you see already here we have 47 versus 102. And here, you, you, one could argue, we get an alarm from the device that you should check again because it's under 60. Well, look over here. Here I checked, it was 134, 133, 129. And the actual reading was, as you see here, 217, which is tens of percent. And that would be totally misleading. And here you see it again, 128 versus 207 from the finger, and so on. And here's another one where I just really had it. I said 157 in my sensor when I really had 246, I just said, I'm replacing the sensor. And look, I put a new sensor here, you see? This is here a full, um, this is like a star. When you have a full um, blue circle, it means you'll see here the legend. It's a new sensor. And here it was initially okay. You see, 164 versus 142, pretty close. Also here, but then it could start moving over time. Here it's still roughly okay. Not so bad. I'm just like, here it's already, there's a difference, but I think it's still acceptable. It's 288 versus 242. Um, I'm just looking, I wrote to myself the things on a piece of paper. Excuse me for a sec. But then if we get to like page 50, it's still with the same sensor. The sensor should last around two weeks, 14 days. And you see over here, here already there's, the difference is starting to grow. It's like 90 versus 130. And here you see already it's even more than that. Slowly but surely um, changed over time. Not horrible, but still it's uh, 118 versus 167. So what I'm saying is, you see, like, overall, look here at the pattern. The pattern here seems to be following. Just I have a, a, con a constant difference between the, the readings. And I think if we calibrate, or at least give me an indication, it would make my life much better. So my message to everybody is, the sensor is a great, it's a new device, but it has to be really ca taken care of. I should say, if it bothers you too, what I did, I went and I complained to the FDA. They're a great community. I mean, they really, I try to help us consu consumers. There, there is a form called... Form 3500B, it's very user-friendly. You could go and show their, your, your um, experience. That's what I did. And of course, the FDA don't tell me what they do, but from what I, I would assume, they would, uh, uh, that would trigger uh, uh, an inquiry with, with the Abbott company who is in charge of the freestyle. If there'll be some more people who report similar experiences, it could happen. And then they'll be able to make our life not too sweet. I mean, I want to have our life sweet, but I don't want to be misled to make it sweeter like I had over here, where I had much higher blood values than what I thought I had. So I could just maybe share with you that form if I have it open. Do I have it open? Um, I'll just try to see if I could find it. If I do that, it'll be nice. If not, we'll just have to live without it. Um, yeah, so yeah, so this is actually, you could, you could see it over here. That's the US and FDA food and drug. That's the FDA, they're really, very, I think, uh, try to be very friendly and try to help. And this is the form we're looking at, consumer and patient. You fill it out. And 
I think by doing that, we'll be able to hopefully cause the device, whoever manufactures devices, I think already the competition are aware of it and they do calibrate or treat or look at it. But also now maybe Abbott with their freestyle sensor will at least alert us that something is wrong with the sensor and make us replace it or calibrate it because this way it's something which changes our lives, but we want it also to improve them, nothing else. That's what I have to say and thank you very much.